I don't want to jump through the summer, so I'll calm down, but you get my point. Joining us now is my friend Ed Fulner. He is the president of the Heritage Foundation. Remember, they were the intellectual firepower behind the Reagan revolution, helped a lot with Newt Gingrich and getting us to a balanced budget. And, you know, as they're pointing out, a national study for the Center for American Policy Analysis, they have an estimate that repealing Obamacare would provide the best real GDP growth of, of more than 1% over the next decade. I mean, remember, the last president, Obama, never had a, a year, a single year in his presidency, the only presidency never to reach 3% GDP growth. And, you know, you look at the numbers, and, I mean, it's so fundamentally smart. Anyway... He wrote a great column at Fulner Dead called The High Cost of Waiting to Drain the Swamp. How are you? I'm great, Sean. Good to talk with you. After all these years, after 61 phony show votes, now I guess we learned from the House that there were 100 Republicans there that had no intention of ever, you know, getting rid of Obamacare. Now we've got the same battle going on in the Senate, although I, in, in all honesty, I am convinced by the Freedom Caucus and Ted Cruz that this will drive down premiums. Absolutely it will, Sean. And what's happening every day that they don't act is exactly the point you just made. We're losing $500 million a day in lost GDP because we're not out there making the kind of reforms we should be making. You take $500 million from that every day. You take $500 million from not getting rid of Dodd-Frank. You take a billion from not passing real tax reform. All of a sudden, you're talking about a, a GDP that just to be, and that means jobs that aren't being created for real people out in America. Well, I mean, it's that. I mean, there's so much they can do. I mean, Steve Forbes is out there rightly saying, if you don't get the economy going, you don't get the people off of food stamps, out of poverty, and back in the labor force, then, and you don't get Obamacare repealed, as I was saying yesterday, and you don't show the American people two or 300 miles of a wall that it, are being built and it's in progress, then I think at that point, you know, what's the reason for voting for Republicans anymore? There is none. No, no, no. Why, why do it? Good friend, our mutual good friend, Jim Jordan, says, boy, when we talk about tax reform and really reform, he said it really is something. When my constituents are, are driving the next forth to two jobs a day and they see a three-generation family across the street over there just living on welfare and food stamps. I mean, this isn't the American dream and this isn't fair to anybody. So, gosh, Congress, let's get our act together. We've got all of this up there. Let's get them doing what they should be doing and start start making things happen. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the more frustrating things. When you wrote this piece about, you know, and we heard all the chanting during the campaign, drain the swamp, drain the swamp, drain the swamp. Um, I don't think I ever imagined 125 deep state leaks in 126 days or such fierce resistance. Not only the Democrats, you see a media that is so abusively biased and agenda driven in the other direction. They had colluded with Hillary. And then you've got Republicans that are weak. I mean, I think Pat Toomey's statement is revealing and frankly pathetic. We, well, we never thought he'd win. We weren't prepared for this. Uh, the fact is, though, Sean, we, you might remember it was last August that I started volunteering at the Trump transition. Uh, Governor Chris Christie gave me the whole domestic policy arena. We had repeal and replace in there. We had all this ready to go so that on November 8th, when the good thing happens and, and Trump was elected and the Republicans had both the House and Senate, man, we were ready to go. We had a couple hundred volunteers in there who were working their hearts and their souls out. And man, uh, the good stuff that was ready to go and it went over and so much of it just kind of plopped. And now, now, and then we got all these problems with all the appointees backing up because Schumer won't let them go through the process. Anyway, I think um, I, I think that you and I are on the same page. Do you think this is their last shot, now or never? It's got to be, Sean. If it doesn't happen this year, everybody starts running for the hills with the 2018 election. And as you just said, everybody I know in real America, that's what, we, what the other guys call flyover America, everybody that we know out there is going to say, does it matter? Why should we even bother to worry about who's on if when we give them the majorities, we give them the presidency, they can't get anything done. It's uh, they, they, they have to get it together and they've got to make it happen within, you know, we've only got like 70, 75 legislative days left this year. Let's make them all count. Let's come back and let's be here during August. Thank you, Mitch McConnell, for at least saying we're going to be here for half of August. So we're not taking 37 days off that we're going to be here and really do something. I, I get 15 days off a year and a couple of long weekends. I take three weeks vacation a year. Who takes vacation like these people? Who has barbershops all over the, the House and Senate like these people and workout rooms and better health care plans than these people? I mean, it's disgusting. All right, Ed, appreciate it. Ed Fulner, Heritage Foundation president. Thank you. Keep fighting. We appreciate it. Uh, 800 941 Sean on this Friday is